Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today's video is all about getting our house ready for the ponies. As you guys know, we've just moved to a new house with some land and we're going to be having the ponies at home which is just a lifelong dream and I still, I don't think it's going to feel real until we've actually got them here. Um, it's not even sunk in yet, so, uh, but there is so much to do. Uh, we haven't even got anywhere for them to sleep, so they're coming home in two weeks time and we've just got to get everything ready for them. So yeah, I'm going to dedicate this vlog to Operation Pony, get them home. Um, and going to show you everything that we're doing uh, to with the land, the stables. We're doing this in the middle of winter. I'm seeing this house at the, its very worst. It is so muddy everywhere. And yeah, we just need to get everything completely ready for them. We've, we've got to get stables built for them. We've got to get sort out all the muddy areas. I'm making an all weather paddock. Um, so we've got to do that. We've got trees coming down. We've got so much to do. Right, so I've just popped inside, just made everyone a tea, keep them all happy. And, oh, where's the scissors? I've just had this amazing package. Well, I don't know what's in, in it, but I'm gonna have a little look. Oh, wow, some plants. Dear Chelsea, Harlow and Harlow, well done for making your dreams come true. May your new home be filled with love, happiness and beautiful memories. We're excited as you and cannot wait to come and visit. Big hug. Oh my gosh, this is from Carmen and her family. Oh, that is so sweet. Let's have a little look. Oh, I love plants. Oh, wow. These are amazing. Oh, they, I think the... Uh, Pots, a pastel colour. Let's open them up. Oh wow, look at this. Baby pink. Oh, they're absolutely beautiful. Oh, that is so sweet. What else is in here? So I've got three of those. Oh, and some chocolates. Very nice. Oh my gosh, thank you guys. Oh, one's cream and one's baby blue. Oh my gosh, they know me so well. Oh, I love it. So let's have a look at this. Yeah, so I absolutely love plants. I'm going to be planting so much stuff at this house. Um, I'm excited to see it in the summer because we haven't seen it yet in the summer. I know what it's like. So we've got a cream one. And I think one's baby blue. Um, I'm going to have like a wildflower um, patch. Just going to be planting loads of stuff. I'm just so excited. And um, yeah, got those um, trees down, which we didn't need. There was two trees and then one hedge, which was blocking the gate. And they just asked like, what do we want to do with it? So we're using loads of the wood chip for, well, we've got 200 square meters of the con mud control slabs going down. So we're going to be using a lot of the wood chip and they're also going to uh, drop off some more. And um, like the actual, like they like they said do i want like logs out of it so which we which we could use for the log burner um but i said what i'll do is um if we can use them for some jumps so like working hunter jumps we'll we'll keep hold of them so um yeah he's they're going to save all that for us as well so that's ideal but yeah the tree that come down um, that one was poisonous and it's right in the paddock. So when I get them refenced, that is going to be right in the middle of it. Well, not in the middle, but in the paddock. And the other one is going to be in the way as well. So yeah, just those two coming down. And then I've got like this palm tree at the back of the house. I don't know if I've shown it on the video yet, um, but it's massive. It's not, I don't, it's not like the ones that you see in like Florida. It's, it's much more like bulkier at the bottom. And at the moment it's blocking so much light and um, from the windows and the hallway and the bathrooms and then my bedroom. Um, and it's, create, it's taking up a lot of space on that decking. And if I eventually get that decking redone, I'll have, you know, I can use that for more, for more space because mo pretty much most of our garden has been taken up by ponies. So, and then this is the baby blue one. So yeah, so that's coming down as well today. How sweet are they? That's so lovely. 
Thank you guys. I know you're going to see the vlog. Oh, who's ringing me now? It's non-stop. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, good morning. Is that Chelsea? Yes, it is. Right, so that was the electric fencing company. So they're coming down next week to give me a hand with the electric fencing because I have never done it in my life and I just don't have a clue. And I've already put on Instagram and I've got loads of help already. Um, but actually, like, physically doing it and just even know what to order and, yeah, it's not easy. So I think what I'm going to do, for people like me, I'm going to make a complete, like, beginner's guide to electric fencing and um, I've got Rutland coming down who, apparently the guy that um, that's coming down to install it, one of them has been working f like for Rutland Electric Fencing, which is a really, really good company. Like pretty much everyone recommended to go uh, t with Rutland for the electric fencing equipment. And yeah, this guy actually like been there since day one of the electric fencing. Um, with Rutland so yeah he's really knowledgeable so if you want any you know good tips or you don't know where to start or what to buy or you know how to set it all up because I'm going to do one of the biggest paddock I'm going to split that up into four so I've got four different sections because it's far too big for um, yeah one you know I can't put mine all out together let me just grab the milk I can't put them all out together because it will literally be a kicking match um, too risky so it needs all splitting up and then I got the other paddock um, well I've got another two paddocks then as well and then the all-weather paddock so yeah I'm gonna have loads of spaces then for to you know to put them all rest areas split them up and then when um, uh, when I get the fencing all redone which would be when the arena gets done um, I can then um, split it up more permanently or have bigger paddocks and then use the electric fencing to like rest like the back of the paddocks if that makes sense so yeah so that's coming up I don't know if it's going to be in this vlog um, or it might be in its own vlog um, I haven't decided yet it depends how long this one is and what's going on um, but yeah it's literally all go and then we've got to sort out the stable situation for the ponies yet that will be I think next week so yeah I'm gonna have this all in one video but what we're doing is so cool um and it's yeah it's good so it's gonna have to last us for like three months uh whilst I wait for all the other stables to be made um and come over from Germany so um yeah that takes a bit of time um so yeah just need to um get those in as well and I think it's gonna be amazing what we're gonna do with the temporary stables so we have just taken delivery of these well six huge pallets these are a ton each um, and these are mud control slabs which i've read so many views of, <laughs> reviews about these and apparently these are going to change my life so i'm very excited to get these down but the first place that they're going to be going is here and if you remember this was all grass here and then we decided to dig it out and then the um what's that thing called like the digger basically it just sunk in the mud and then uh, we dug so much out uh, it looked more like a swimming pool i'm going to put some pictures in and it was just like a slurry it was just full of water it was too wet um and well basically we had to fix it so um i thought what can i do i i knew that you i knew these existed and i'd always thought oh well, you know I'd, I'd like some of those because they are just amazing for horses but i never i'm just going to put this camera here but i never knew that you could put well it's not until i went on the website that i realized that you can drive tractors over them like put, they, they take 60 tons these plastic slabs um so i thought why did we not just do that because basically what i want to do is dig it up put a load of gravel down um just to make a really really good base for the um i've got a container to go on there and then it's like just basically like more parking and oh what was that oh it's the thing um so then we started <laughs> digging it out and we was like 
it's not going to very well. Um, so a little bit of a mistake there, but actually, to be honest with you, there's um, a drainage pipe underneath and once we dug it out, we realised that was leaking. Um, so we did replace that. So, it, you know, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a really big mistake. And then I thought, right, I need these mud control slabs. Um, so I ordered them and I thought, whilst I'm at it, I'm just going to order loads because, oh, there's a fly over here. Yeah, and I just thought, right, I'm just going to order loads and just get these fields ready because I really don't want to be knee deep in mud. We haven't got loads of land either. Um, we haven't got acres and acres to leave, to rest, to do all of this. We, you know, I've got to look after what we've got. Um, and I really just don't like the mud. So I thought, right, let's just order everything I need. Me and my dad went round and measured up all the areas, went on the site and ordered everything that we need. And it was five and a half pallets um, that arrived and they all arrived this morning. And if you do make an order, make sure you book like a farmer or someone to come round with a forklift because they are absolutely huge and it literally took 10 minutes uh, for the farmer but when I called them on the phone they said make sure you get some help otherwise you're going to be about seven eight hours um, moving these and I thought no not for me um, so yeah that was amazing amazing that I got someone around to help and they were all in in a flash so today we are going to be putting them down in this area first and then we're going to be putting them in one of the paddocks and then I'm going to be making my very own little paddock paradise which I didn't know was a thing until um, earlier this week um, so yes yeah, so much to do oh it's getting worse by the minute this corner I think we're going to have to um, gravel that just cut that roundabout a little bit shorter because this is not good so we've started i think the boys yeah they're putting wood chip down first just to absorb some of that mud this is going to be a walkway for the ponies to get to the field so i don't want squelchy squelchy mud so we're going to put that down before the slabs go on all right so they're going in so it's best to stagger these oh it's so quick i cannot believe how quick these are going in Just slide in just like that. We've put a little bit of wood chip down first. <laughs> just to help with the mud a little bit, but it's not necessary, but it's just, we're using them because um, the tree surgeon had them here anyway, just to happen to be on the same day. So I'm gonna make the most of them. So this is gonna be the ponies walkway. Like I'm still on them now absolutely incredible they don't even move as you're walking you're sinking there but just one on its own that's insane but like this is not budging one bit as you're walking along this is unbelievable that they are, they are a big investment, but this is going to absolutely transform this area and we're going to be able to use it. I'm going to be able to use it for parking. We're not going to have a trailer stuck in the mud. Well, we actually put the, put, put the horse box on it when it wasn't even like a mud pit. It was actually just like proper lawned grass and it got stuck. So um, I had to tow it out of my discovery. So yeah, it was totally unusable this area. And now I'm gonna be able to put a massive shipping container here, uh, which we're using for storage and be able to put the trailer. Any old friends play golf, Joe? No, no, why? Uh, my mate, you know them little things I put the balls on? You know what Tees. You want a tea? <laughs> <laughs> Does everyone want a tea?
little update. It's all going really well. We're nearly there. I think we're just going to get, um, because the shipping container is arriving tomorrow, um, which is just being used for storage at the moment. Um, yes, this we're just going to do this area and I think worry about this area once all the skip and that's gone. So, um, yeah, so excited. It's just been so perfect. Like, can't believe how it's transformed this area and we've been able to use it so much better. So this is also going to be um, a walkway for the ponies. Um, so they'll come out of the barn. They'll come out the barn here. They'll walk around here. I'm going to like gravel this area and they're going to have about three of these slabs. They're going to have a really big space to be able to walk to the back, which will take them to the to their paddock. So yeah, no muddy walk. It's going to be brilliant. And this is how the tree's doing. So this was the tree that wasn't good for the ponies and um, because this area is all going to be um, the, like it's, it's a wasted grazing here. So I want to just n take this fence down eventually when I get it all refenced and um, bring this back right up to uh, the back of the stable. So all the all their windows will be at the back and they're going to have a lovely little view actually. Um, so yeah, but all of this is just wasted. This um, shed will be coming down and I said that I would keep, they're going to tidy them up for me, but I said I'm going to keep these logs. There's quite a lot of um, tree branches as well, which are going to be great for like poles and we'll do we're going to use them for like the work and hunter jumps so we can have some of our own at home um so yeah we've been using loads of wood chips which so that's been really handy and then they're going to be tidying up some of the hedges and yeah so much to get, so much to do Right, so I thought I'd show you in Harlow's bedroom. I've got Harlow with me now, and we're going to do a bit of organising tonight. So this bed, uh, this bathroom is all done because all we had to have painted was the was the white. So we've started unpacking in here, and we're going to do a bit of organising. So I've I've organised some of it. Yeah, we've got this. In, that's what we got from uh, B and M. If you can remember from our little haul. And then these are from B and M. These jars. This is from B and M. <laughs> these are from B and M. Oh, um, this is this lovely. That's light from B and M. No, that's not. It's from Next. No. So cute little seashell. And these are also from Next too. And I just no, absolutely. We got no, we didn't, darling. I ordered these online. Got these from Next, and I love them. And I also got this little matching. Yeah, it's all a little bit messy, but. Yeah. I've, I've sorted out all my cream hair bands. And I'm gonna put them into the jar because I, I ran out of cotton pads, so I can't put two of the cot. I just can't put two like things with cotton pads in them. And I also think it will look a bit weird, but it's probably gonna look a bit weird with hair bands and they're not gonna lie. Um, but hey hey. Goes with the colour thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh yeah, these are our deodorants. So these are wild deodorants. If you don't know about them, you need to know about them. They're so, they smell amazing. And they are just so cute. I don't know if you can see, but they're like, they've got the names on them. So and I've been using wild uh, for a while. I need to while. put my refill in. And yeah, we are really excited that we've partnered with them. Um, so I've got Harlow one now because she is all about like this clean girl vibes. And Wild is powered by plants. So it's natural, it's got no aluminium salts in, it's got uh, no parabens, it's just cruelty free, it's safe, it's vegan friendly. And also one of my favorite things about it is that they like reducing uh, plastic. So yeah, and all of the, the refills as well. It's all. Paper. I think those are made of like yeah, like bamboo. Um, but yeah, all you need to do is like buy one of these, 
and then you've got your refills in here. There's a load and loads of different refill scents and they all smell incredible. So there's definitely gonna be one that you guys are gonna like. So all you need to do is buy your like dispenser and then once you've got that, you keep it. We actually got ours personalized, which is really cute. We know whose is who. And then you just change the refills. So um, you've got um, vanilla. I've got vanilla. coconut and vanilla, which is my favorite. It is absolutely amazing. Oh, that's lovely. Nice. And what I love is they actually really work. They do. I, I, I think it's just because I've got older, but I always say that. I talk like I'm 50. You're not that old. I'm not that old, but I do feel like just so, like some things just don't work anymore. Well, a lot of things don't work, and then I I absolutely mm. hate the thought of any metals going onto our skin, and especially with Harlow being so young. So this is something that I'm really passionate about, and yeah, I just think this is just an amazing concept and I've been loving using this and now Harlow's got her own. Yeah, um, and especially with the ponies at home now, like we're non-stop working around. We're sweaty girls. S sweating. We are sweating, I never move so much. <laughs> so if you would like to get 20% off anything on the world website, then use our code HLW20 for 20% off. You can also use the QR code, which is on screen now, and I will pop a link in the description box down below. Um, but thank you to Wild for partnering with us. And yeah, I hope you guys love the products as much as we do. So guys, we've got my dad here. He's laying all the mud control slabs. So we've got our temporary stables coming in tomorrow. So he's been very busy the last day and a half getting all of this ready. Um, it was, a bit slower um, getting this ready because it was so muddy over here you'll see it down here it is just thick 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 mud and I'm just walking on this now like absolutely fine it's not even budging which is incredible um, but yeah, so we wanted to create a really nice base for the temporary stables to go down on because it is for a long time. It's not like it's just for a week or anything. They're going to be in the temporary barn um, for a few months until around the end of May uh, when our other stables come um, in the main barn. So we're having this temporary barn built. So we've got something somewhere for the ponies to sleep. We can get the ponies home and yeah we're just somewhere nice and dry we can tack up all of that in there if it's raining um so yeah it's nice and spacious and yeah so i wanted to put down these mud control slabs because literally we are in winter and if i put them on any part of our grass that it's just going to be an absolute mess uh, for day to day living and mucking them out and everything but you have to put down sand on top and this just makes this just a finishing touch isn't it why do you think that we have to do this oh binds the holes up and limits the movement um so we all did six tons of sand uh, to come in and my dad is just spreading that on and I cannot tell you how incredible these are. And this is a huge area we've done. It's absolutely massive. Um, but the plan long term is um, when the stables have gone, when, this, when the temporary stables have gone, um, probably half of them I'm going to pull up and put elsewhere. Yeah, long term, I'm always going to want them down on this area because this is going to be where most of the traffic is, you know, they're going to be standing at the gate, they're going to be looking at us in the kitchen whilst we're, we're in there, especially Popcorn because he is so nosy. So yeah, they're going to be down this area a lot. So um, yeah, the, now that they're in, they won't be going anywhere. But long term, you know, once the temporary barn has been move we'll probably take half of them up and put them elsewhere i do need to sort out some drainage and that when we get our arena done i'm gonna sort get out get some drainage put in and just get that out that water for long term but this is just the most unbelievable solution 
these these mud mud slabs. I can't even explain how unreal they are. You would just think you was walking like on concrete, wouldn't you? They're so um solid. Ooh. Oh! Oh wow! All this right. is amazing. It's incredible, isn't it? Wow! This is amazing. So the barn, the temporary barn, will be going on here. So then we walk in the gate here. And then we'll have about two or three slabs wide where we can um, walk the ponies up. We'll walk them up to about here. And then this will be the entrance to the barn. It'll wow. be an open barn. We can walk in. We'll have two stables that side and two stables that side. And then we'll have um, three by six uh, metres space in the inside where we can put... I don't know, I thought maybe about putting like a feed table in there so we can make yes. the feeds. Um, yeah, because the ponies are going to be in temporary barn for about... To the end of May. Yeah, so... To the end of May. So we just need somewhere practical, really. They can sleep. It's going to be warm, dry. Well, it's only about warm, actually, but the England's getting a bit warmer. <laughs> England's getting warm by the day, actually, I think. Yeah, a little bit. It's just been very, very, very wet the last few days. Yeah. It's been horrendous, so it's not ideal, but it's so lucky that we could still put these down. It was just a little bit more difficult in the corner to get the mud, uh, the mud slabs down. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. Fab. And then we'll, we'll, there's going to be sand on top of this and then rubber matting. So there's going to be sand and I think we're actually going to be putting some like tarpaulin down and then the rubber matting and then the barn. OK, so there's quite a lot of layers. A lot of and then we've got all their bedding. Yeah, so it's going to be quite squishy for them, I think. Right, should we go look at the bedding? Because that's all arrived as well. Yes. And then, because this gate's here as well, so we can, like, close this gate. So if there's any, like, escapees... Oh, yeah, they can, we can shut them in. It's nice yeah. and secure. Oh, my God. There's a lot of rubbish around at the moment. Wow. Yes, very much construction site vibes. A lot going on. OK, so we have got 180 bales of Aventus shavings. So yeah, we've got loads. They aren't going to be staying here. I'm going to move them closer to our new barn. I thought it's going to be. Yeah, but they just had to come somewhere and everywhere else was in the way. So <laughs> yeah, we've got Aventus, which we have tried. We had a little trial with it and loved it. Um, we haven't tried this one though, the Eucalyptus and Citronella, and I'm really excited to... Because it's got Citronella in it. I can smell it from here. I can see, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really nice. And then I've got plain ones, but we have to be really careful with popcorn because he's got a really bad dust allergy. So, um, yeah, we've had to be careful. And these are all dust free and he agrees with these. So that's really good. Look, dust free, grade A. Ideal for sensitive horses prone to respiratory problems, which is popcorn. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've got all our bedding ready and yeah, we've got to get all those stables ready, haven't we? Yep. Make nice, big, fluffy beds. Yes, there's nothing better than a big, fluffy No, there's nothing bed. better. I can't wait. You've got raindrop on your nose. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to have all the um, mud slabs on um, this walkway as well, but we'll do it. Oh my God, this is amazing. It looks really good, doesn't it? It looks amazing. So yeah, we've got Rutland. Don't touch it, Don't oh, touch it you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a Rutland electric fencing here who have done the most amazing job of getting this paddock all split up into four. We've got four equal size paddocks, super safe. We just made um, our um, fencing a little bit better because it has seen better days, definitely. It's a bit wobbly. But we definitely wasn't going to be uh, replacing all of that at this stage. So, yeah, we've made that more secure. So, you know, if Panda, Panda has a little bum rub, He's not going to be knocking the fence over. Or <laughs> Rolo, because he's quite a grip. Rolo, Rolo is so itchy, so... He's um, quite aggressive with his band wraps. <laughs> yeah, oh, that'd be straight on the floor, wouldn't it, with him? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've gone higher, um, and then we've got a, a mid a mid rail rope as well with the electric te uh, rope. And, yeah, four gates. Well, actually, one, two, three, yeah, four, five gates, one entrance, four gates, four separate paddocks, but it looks good, doesn't it? Looks amazing. I'm going to say a fair distance. Yes. Oh, yeah. Shock. But this is um, one of the bigger paddocks. 
So this, this is, is our big, biggest paddock, like as a whole, this is our big, biggest paddock, yeah. Uh, the, the other one's actually not far off, actually. But yeah. we'll probably split that up in half at a later date. Yeah, but um, it's just because there's a lot of grass in here. Yeah, we need it eaten all down. And then our arena will be going on some of it at some point once we've got planning permission, hopefully. Um, and then we will roll it, treat it, all of that, because it's a little bit rutty at the moment, but they're going to just go wild when they see this much grass, aren't they? <laughs> they, they? They've got a lot of grass at the moment, don't get me wrong, but this is like a lot of grass. This is a lot of grass. And I think we might have some spicy ponies after this. Yeah, and we wanted to <laughs> split it all up because we didn't want any of them to get laminitis or anything so uh well i don't know we can put i think there's enough to get laminitis even in this one bit we've had the amazing rutland electric fencing come down and help us with this which we are so so i'm beyond grateful they've literally been lifesavers and i filmed an entire vlog on how we've installed the electric fencing so if you want any tips tricks you want to know exactly how we've done what we've used it's basically a beginner's guide to electric fencing because yeah. i had absolutely no clue so go check out that it, vlog it would have probably taken this this for us to do it like probably like oh five days 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 yeah and granddad's super busy doing lots of other things so at least we've been able to take this stress off of him yeah um because i certainly didn't have a clue i didn't even know <laughs> what to order for a start um so yeah really really grateful that they've been able to come down and install it properly safely and We've got it's all ready to go now. Right, guys, so I'm going to talk you through all of the progress which has been made now on the barn. So this is how you will remember it. And yeah, very little work has been done at the point of this video. Um, so you can see all the stills are bright red. So you can see on the right hand side of the screen, there is a doorway. Uh, we're having that blocked in and because that's where the wash bay is going to be and we're gonna put the door to enter the barn from the feed room um, in another position um, because it was just in the way there. We've taken out the windows that you can see here and they are gonna be bricked in because I don't wanna have windows going into the tack room. So this is what's gonna be our saddle room. Um, so the window on the left has to be blocked in. Um, all of the roof has to come out and then we're going to have a vaulted ceiling so all of that has to be, it's just rotten um totally useless um, and then this is our tack room so we're having two parts the saddle room and then the tack room um which is going to have like saddle pads boots all of that stuff in this room um and this is i'm just so excited for this room uh it's going to be just us oh, organized heaven um, so yeah, there's lots and lots to do and there's been so much progress that has been made and I'm going to show you lots of different clips in this video of what's been done. Um, so you can see here on the far left, um, there was a, a, a walkway, a door. We've actually going to be filling that in and creating a door, uh, which you can see on the right just now. Um, so that's a new door and the other one will be blocked in. Uh, we're having all of the stills spray painted um, grey because the red was so vibrant and it just didn't go with anything. And once the new roof is on, that's going to be white. And I just really wanted to change it. And it was quite an easy job to do, especially while we didn't, um, we wasn't gonna be ruining anything. So it was very easy to have them sprayed. We did plan on doing this by hand, but when I had the decorators round, they said, oh, you know, if you don't need to worry about the walls, the ceiling and everything, it'd be just so much quicker to spray it, spray it all. So I was like, perfect, let's get that booked in. And it was like a two day job. So yeah, really brilliant that we just could just spray wherever. But we did have a problem actually. Uh, but the two days that we decided to do it, it was the wettest days and all of the condensation. I had I had it all sprayed, then it rained like you wouldn't believe that night and then the next day. And then all of the wet and the condensation was just dripping the next day. So it actually dripped a lot of the paint off and they had to finish it um, like a week later once it had dried and 
once the weather had dried as well, but they had to do it by hand. Um, but to be fair, we did get most of the paint on um, by spraying, which was good. But I think by just spraying it has just tied everything together and made such a huge difference. Um, we're going to be having all of the walls rendered and they're going to be white and the stables are going to be so beautiful. So yeah, I'm so happy that we did this. So moving on to back outside, we'll go back in the barn in a minute, um, but this was in the area where we're going to be having our temporary stables and it was just a little bit in the way and uh, moving forward when I do start using this area as a paddock, uh, this is a health hazard, um, this stock fencing, um, you know, if the ponies get their legs through that, that's literally going to be like a cheese grater on their legs it was just a big big no so that has to be ripped out and then they had some of these little um i don't know what to call these uh but they were in the way and um so good old granddad this is a granddad job um is taking those out for me and yeah just getting this area all prepped really we just got a tiny bit more space we were just a little bit short on where the barn the, the temporary barn is going to be going and I wanted like plenty of space for the walkway to get them in the barn. So yeah, we're taking this out and um, yeah, just for the future, it's ready uh, for the ponies to go in this paddock because I haven't got this stock fence in. And then this is our temporary barn. This is where the ponies are gonna be until the end of May. And I didn't actually get any footage of them being installed because I was out that day. Uh, but I managed to get some off of one of the security cameras. Um, so yeah, you can see just how quick it's going up. It was unbelievable. Um, so yeah, we've got four stables in a, like a barn setting. And it's just absolutely brilliant. So I have hired these stables um, from a company called Chevelle Liberty. Um, it's not an ad, I've paid full price, but I've hired them um, for, you can hire them for as long as you want. And it's just amazing temporary solution. Um, if you need more stables or if you're waiting for planning permission or just bad weather, anything. So as you can see, I've got two stables here on the right and then the equivalent of two stables in the middle area and then two stables on the left. So it's called an eco barn and the stables are three by three. So they're a really nice size and they are just, oh my, they have just been a godsend. Um, so yeah, we've got them down on the mud control slabs and it means we can see the ponies outside our bedroom windows and outside the dining area in the kitchen. So yeah, this is gonna be so cute. And then moving back into the barn, um, so you can see on the left here that the brickwork is all being raised higher, so that will go up to the roof. We've also moved the tack room door because where it was uh, originally, it was in the way of where the stables are going to be going. We just needed a tiny bit more space, so we pushed uh, the door further down towards the entrance. Um, you can see we've got that new door there just on the left, that's for the going from the feed room into the barn. We're now in the feed room. Um, this roof is all gonna be ripped out, but this is how it was at the time. Um, got have new windows going in as well. Um, and you can see that the roof and the walls are already starting to come off and the stills are all painted gray. So we actually had a bit of sun this day, which was so rare. I swear that we've done this in the worst time ever. There's just, I've never known rain like it. So it's been a little bit stressful and life's been a bit difficult and my driveway is completely non-existent now, um, but it's all gonna be worth it. Um, but you can see here, this is the tack room and what it's looking like with the vaulted ceiling, which is just amazing. Um, I'm so happy that we was able to have that because that's something that I wanted straight away. And then you can see here, the one of the stable windows is being cut out of the brick wall. Um, and then we've got more windows going in, but that's gonna be on the new wall, which is yet to be fitted. Um, so yeah, that all has to be done at this stage before uh, all the cladding and new wall goes on. Um, yeah, all bit of a process. And then, yeah, just let in so much more light. So I cannot wait for the rest of the windows to go in because we're gonna have a lot. 
and yeah oh it's gonna be a pony's little head popping over there um before we know it um so yeah this is it once it's all um knocked out at the back and the new roof has started to go in so you can see it there and it's a really nice finish from underneath and it's all insulated so we're going to get no condensation or anything like that and it's going to be super toasty and warm for the pony so hopefully we haven't got to really over rug them and I think with the white it's going to just bounce all the light around and lighting was such a big factor for me in here I wanted to just be really happy with how everything was going to be and there's not going to be any really dark areas um, and yeah we've actually got two you can see in the the far left there uh, two window lights um, which I love and let in so much light and then these are the new windows that are going in on the feed room um, they are not actually white they've just got the stickers on them at the sale at the moment um, I think they're white from the inside but dark grey on the outside so it's going to match the steels um, but yeah the new roof has gone on in here as well and then those wooden beams I think something's happening with those um, I think they're being painted or something like that I actually just can't keep up with it all uh, but this is that uh, a walkway that we've blocked in and then created the new one which is here and then on the left right in front of us you can see the other walkway that was blocked in. So yeah, we just had to reconfigure that a little bit. Straight ahead is the new tack room. So we've got a really, really nice big tack room door, um, which the stable company are going to make. So it's all going to be in keeping. And yeah, you can see that that uh, brick wall has been raised right up to the roof now. And then that is all going to be rendered. Um, we've got new windows going in as well on those four um, little squares that you can see above. And yeah, we just started to build the block work up. Um, so the rubber matting for the stables will go on top of that. Um, but yeah, we couldn't have the horses kicking through uh, that cladding because they will literally just ruin it. I, they, ours aren't kickers, but you just literally can't risk that, can you? Um, so yeah, this is the current stage we're at. This is as far as we've got. And I'm just really happy how quickly we've managed to do everything um, in such a short space of time. Uh, it's been less than a month we've managed to do all of this work. So super speedy. Um, but yeah, going into the tack room here, you can see that uh, wind window light there, um, which is brilliant because we've got no windows in here. Um, I just wanted as much space as possible with storage. Then I was going to put some really nice lights in here. Um, so yeah, it's all come together really, really quickly and yeah, I couldn't be happier with how it's all looking so far. There is so much to do, but we've just made brilliant progress. The roof and the walls isn't entirely finished yet and there's all the, these little block work that you can see there where there's gaps. Um, but yeah, if you can see gaps of light and air coming through, it's because it's not finished yet. They, they've still got to come back and do all the trimmings and bits like that. So yeah, they, it won't be like really drafty or anything. Um, it's just because it's not finished. Right guys, so I thought I'd give you a bit of an update of what's going on. All the panelling is... We're pretty much there now. I have got to do the hallway, but... Um, and there is a tiny bit more to do in here. So this is going to be like the dining area. I've got my lovely table, which I in here from Cotswold Company, which I cannot wait to unbox. Um, but yeah, we've got all the tongue and groove paneling. Oh, hey, you OK? Uh, so we've got all the paneling up here, all around this area. I really, well, this is quite a big space, especially with like the vaulted ceilings. And I really just wanted to like make it really cozy in here. Um, but the carpenter is my cousin. He needs to come back and all the insides of the uh, door frame is going to be done. And the same for the windowsill here. So, yeah, and I'm so, so happy. I'm glad that we did this. Originally, I was only going to go up to about here. And I thought with just the ceilings being so high in this bit, it's not really going to look right. And also we had the two radiators here before and I had them taken off because they were just a bit of an eyesore and there's already two massive radiators in here already and the log burner and I just thought we don't really need it so um 
we've decided to go for, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's this the Farron Ball Skim and Stone. And then I was thinking, what colour am I going to have on the top or my, what I'm going to have on the woodwork? And I decided for this room, because every room I've done like different, I didn't want it to be all really samey. I've decided to do like colour drenching which is um, where you just paint everywhere the same colour. So the skimming stone is going to be on the woodwork and it's going to be um, on the walls. Actually, no, it's not going to be on the ceiling, but the ceiling's going to be white. Walls are going to be all skimming stone and so the skirting boards and the windowsill. Um, so yeah, I cannot wait for this room. This is like the last room to, to kind of happen now. They're just going to start doing all the filling in and yeah, I have got to do the, the hallway, but I need to get a carpenter back out because I want to do like a, a mud boot room kind of thing in there. But I'll take you to the other rooms and we'll just show you how they're looking now because they're pretty much finished now and we're going to start moving our stuff in in a couple of days. Yeah, so the hallway is going to be last, but yeah, I want to have like this um, a big mud room bench kind of thing here. Um, it has to be like bespoke made because it's on like a curve. So I have to have something, someone really good come in. Yeah, loads of hooks and stuff. We can hang the coats, school bags, nice bench with lovely baskets so we can put shoes in there. I just want everywhere to have a home. And this is such a like bit of a wasted space here really and I can't even get like um, a console unit or anything here because it's on a curve. Um, let me see if we're not in the way to come in here. Hello. Oh yeah we'll have a quick little peek. Oh gosh. Right yeah. So this is my bedroom and it's just it looks amazing. Um, I'm absolutely buzzing. So we've got elephant's breath on the wall skimming stone on the top and I couldn't be happier with the colours it just looks really like just looks like cashmere um looks amazing so yeah excited to get all the curtains and that up and I've got elephant's breath on the on the wardrobes here which looks good I had to move all of everything that was in the lounge um not that I've got much in here into the hallway just to get it out of the way but I do want to get all like panelling and that in the hallway but it's just having the, the carpenter having enough time because I've given them a lot of jobs and um, so this is the utility I'm not gonna you know eventually I might want to do something really nice in here but I just need it to be practical space at the moment um, and I just want to just jazz it up with a bit of paint I used to be like obsessed with white so this is like really quite crazy for me that I've wanted to go for colour everywhere, but we've gone for cornforth white on the walls and it's like a beigey grey. Um, I thought it would tie in with the, the worktops. Um, it's not like a, a perfect match, but I think it goes nicely and I think it looks good. It's only had one coat on here so far, so it does need a couple more, but I actually love the colour. I really, really like it. I'm happy with that. And I think it just warms the room up a little bit and it's not going to show the marks as much either. Um, but in here, what I'm wanting to do is get like a rail from this side up here, running the whole way across to the other side. So we've just got loads of space to hang up washing and ironing and stuff like that. Got to get my washer and dryer in here yet. Um, I'm going to have like my, I've got like a late land era. Um, I'm going to pop in here. Hoover, ironing boards, all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's all going to be happening. So this is Harlow's room. Uh, she's got the panelling all the way around. I didn't want to just go for the one wall in here. Uh, she can have a bedside table each side, her bed in the middle. Uh, we went for Wimborne White on the top and Skim and Stone on the bottom because it just works, that colour. And it was like the perfect beige. It wasn't too grey or too yellowy, so we have ended up using that in my room and then now the like lounge dining area. So, um, yeah, I just love it. Love that colour. And actually, we just, I just seen houses on Instagram and just seen what colours that they'd use and I just went for it. I didn't even do all like the, 
the samples. I just went straight in and bought the stuff. So when I viewed the house, I loved the flooring, that it was all oak everywhere because that would have been my preferred choice anyway, rather than carpet, because I feel like with carpet, you've got to end up replacing it. Um, but the tone of the wood was a little bit too orangey for me, um, a little bit too dark, and I would ideally have loved it, like a really nice sandy, like washed out color. But I am really happy that it's wood. But what I did, I got someone round and they quoted me to sand the whole house and it was seven and a half thousand pounds. And I just thought, that's just so much money uh, for sanding the floor. And I would just buy some nice rugs instead. I feel like they're not like ginormous rooms anyway. And the time that the beds are in and the furniture's in, um, you're not even gonna see much of the floor. Um, and I just thought I'd just invest that money in some rugs because I would have wanted to get the rugs anyway, just to cozy it up. And I think from like a terrier's point of view, it just looks nice when you have like the rug and then the bed like halfway over the rug. So this is Harlan's room and I pushed the boat out with this green colour. This is not my usual, I, like, I normally go for like be beige and cream. So yeah, going for a green was, yeah, it was, it was definitely pushing it, but I'm so, so happy with it. This is one of my favourite rooms actually. Um, I love the floor to ceiling, tongue and, tongue and groove. Um, this colour I went for, it's called Dead Flat by Farrow and Ball, and I think it's called Terron or Treron. Um, and then the creamy white colour is like the perfect light beige, and that is Schoolhouse White. And I think the colours look absolutely amazing together. Um, I've also found the most perfect bed set to go in here. So I'm so excited to start styling this room and Harlan loves it, he's so happy. Um, so yeah, I could get some like lights as well to go off, off the wall, I think that would look nice. Um, so yeah, this looks really, really good. So this is my office and I just didn't know what to do in here because I've used so many like creams and beiges and um, I just thought, what can I do? I, I do love the colour on the top, but then I thought if I did it on the panelling, it's just going to look so washed out. It's going to look so much like the other rooms. So I decided just to really go for it and go for something quite bold. And I think it looks really good. This is um, called Broccoli Brown, and I was worried that it was going to be a little bit greeny, but it's not green. I don't know what it's showing like on camera, but it's not green at all. It's like the perfect chocolate brown. And I've used Stir About on the top, and I think they complement each other beautifully. And I'm so happy. This is such a cosy room and I can't wait to do all the editing in here, editing all the vlogs. And yeah, it's gonna get a nice lamp. I do wanna do sort of like a built-in office kind of thing going on in here, um, but I'm probably just gonna move in the furniture that I've got to start with and then sort, of sort that out at a later date because I've got so much going on. Um, but I've also, got this which came with the house which is handy i don't think i can even open it um, but this is this was a wardrobe but this is going to be great storage in here um so i can put loads of stuff in there and yeah i'm going to get a nice rug lamp chair put all the pictures on that on the wall so yeah very excited to get uh working we also did the stir about colour on the architrave and the skirting boards in here just to do that like colour drenching thing. I think if we went for white skirting in here I just don't think it would have looked right. Changing the heights of this. Oh yeah. I am also going to change, I really like those like um, like brass or like an old gold kind of colour um, light switches and electric sockets but I'm going to do that at a later date as well. Um, but it doesn't, it's not urgent. So in here, you're not seeing it all properly finished because I do feel like I do want to paint some of the doors. I'm definitely going to change all the door handles as well. Um, but this room, I decided just to go for all white in here. Um, I just ran out of colour options, to be honest with you, and I just thought it would be really nice to do something really light and airy. The panelling as well is different to the other rooms, and it makes the wall look massive. I'm really happy um, with how it's turned out in here. But the panelling we've gone for like floor to ceiling, very, very simple and I think it looks so effective. I'm absolutely thrilled with it and I just was just thinking what can I do that's different 
to all of the other rooms because I just don't want it to be really samey. Um, so yeah, went for a white. I'm going to have like nice white linen curtains um, on the windows and yeah, just want to make it nice and dreamy. I get all my lovely bed in here, white bedding, and it's just different to the other rooms. This, this room as well has got such beautiful lighting. It's going to be great for taking pictures and just have a nice, clean, empty room, which uh, looks nice all of the time with like no clutter in it. So this is like, this is like the, um, what do you, this is the Instagram room really. I also feel like this, this door, even if it's from the inside only, needs painted white because it's just standing out too much. Um, so still, still a lot more to do. So I think I'm going to end it here now, guys, um, because I've give you, give you the tour, give you the update how it's going. I've been in for two weeks now. We are moving in in two days' time, so um, I feel like I'll just start a brand new vlog then. But I hope you like our new house. I'm so excited for all the amazing memories we're going to make here and so excited to get the ponies back. That is just going to be, oh, it's going to be a pinch me moment. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I better get cracking. I've got so much to do and I'll see you next time in another vlog. Bye.